So the question is, I have learnt how to set up uh, Hadoop clusters either by using Hortonworks or Cloudera. Uh, so if I want to pursue the certification, uh, which certification uh, should I take? So the answer is, there are multiple certifications that are well re recognized. Um, uh, uh, you have to give one of them. Okay, so there are three vendors which are well recognized in, in the Hadoop, uh, Hadoop market. One is Cloudera, second one is Hortonworks, third one is Mapper. Okay, but out of the three, Cloudera and Hortonworks are more prominent uh, in US than Mapper. And uh, uh, when it comes to administration, if you go to, uh, if you search for CCAH, CCAH stands for uh, Cloudera Certified uh, administrator of Apache Hadoop. Okay, if you go to CCAH and if you search for the uh, uh, the curriculum or uh, the details about the certification, this actually uh, this is actually objective type exam. It has sixty questions, and ninety minutes is the time limit, and seventy percent is the pass mark. It was very well recognized. Um, uh, the questions. Uh, are mostly straight. There will be some case, uh, um, some case studies. They will be giving some case studies, and you have to uh, do some. Uh, you have to use some analytical skills, and you have to uh, answer some of the questions. For example, uh, they might ask uh, if the file is uh, um, 1100 MB. What should be the what will be the size of the last block? Okay, mostly it will be 100 MB. And also using the schedulers, they will ask if it is a FIFO scheduler, uh, um, what will be the uh, what will be the status, um, uh, what will be the uh, number of process at a point in time. So they will give a case study. And no, they don't allow to use calculator. It means uh, this is object to exam. Uh, you it's you just have to. Um, uh, use uh, um, uh, math by paper or something you cannot take the calculator um, uh, one of the question while answering this is whether they let you uh, they let us to use calculator uh, you don't need to use calculator okay it, it will be pretty straightforward only thing is you should know how to get the solution and also there will be options so uh, it is very easy to once you understand the concepts you can discard the incorrect answers and you can uh, come to the correct answer and then uh, um, uh, mo mostly it's a conceptual based uh, there, there, will, uh, there won't be any practicals as part of the exam and the weightage is 17 percent on HDFS so there uh, uh, it will it is all about HDFS there won't be any map reduced based questions here so as part of the HDFS also uh, mostly they will focus on the uh, name node secondary name node and uh, data node what is the block size what is the replication factor uh, etc you need to remember some defaults also uh, the port number for the name node uh, web interface and the default block size the default replication factor some important uh, defaults you have to remember not all but some and then they will test on the concepts so you have to understand this curriculum if they are asking Describe the function of HDFS daemons, which is in detail. And when it comes to um, the HDFS federation or HDFS high availability, they are asking, given a scenario, identify appropriate use case of for HDFS federation. So it's more of a theoretical question. Okay, uh, more than uh, anything else, they are trying to understand. They are trying to test whether you understand the concept of HDFS federation, not the implementation of it. Okay, and when it comes to HDFS HA quorum cluster, they are asking uh, to uh, identify components and daemons. So you just need to understand what are the components that are involved as part of HDFS HA quorum. Like it includes journal nodes, uh, zookeeper, uh, active name node, passive name node, etc. So those are the things uh, which you need to be aware of. Again, it, it doesn't test whether you have the implementation experience. And then analyze the role of HDFS security, very straightforward, uh, the, the, uh, they don't go beyond this one when it comes to Kerberos. They will only ask what type of uh, security Kerberos provides uh, or sometimes they, uh, they might even pose the question this way, uh, if one need to secure the cluster, 
how can they how can they do it and calculus will be one of the options so uh, there, there will be questions so straight you just need to know the terms uh, in some of the cases okay and uh, then uh, then yarn and map reduce have 17% weightage uh, yeah uh, another point by mustak yes fs image comes under the function of hdfs demons it's a very important component uh, concept uh, that's why i told uh, uh, as part of this you have to get into the details they are asking to describe the function of hdfs demons also describe the normal operation of an apache hadoop cluster both in data storage and data processing so these two actually cover um, uh, everything that you need to know about fs image edit logs um, uh, name node data node etc it will be backup recovery right? fs image is for uh, not backup and recovery it's to uh, uh, it's for fault tolerance more than backup and recovery okay so it works similar to backup and recovery of oracle uh, you have the uh, so the difference between backup and recovery and fs image and edit logs is backup and recovery in oracle works on the actual data okay whereas the name node recovery uh, talks about metadata of the data it's, it it don't uh, talk about the backing up the data it talks about metadata of the data which is typically in memory as it is in memory if something goes wrong uh, 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 as memory is transient you will not be able to recover for that reason as the operations happen in memory they will try to uh, log in edit log and then uh, edit log will be flushed into uh, merged into fs images so that you have the snapshot of your uh, uh, name node memory which have the metadata for at regular intervals okay so don't compare with oracle's backup and recovery oracle's backup and recovery is primarily for data whereas uh, name node recovery uh, using fs image and edit logs is for only the namespace or the data the metadata which is being stored in memory and it is primarily to fault tolerance of the name node so that if name node goes down we can recover uh, on some other name node or on the same name node uh, when we restart it okay so then um, n and map reduce version 2 uh, 17% here they will emphasize more on mrv2 than uh, mrv1 but there will be few questions on mrv1 also and then cluster planning these are all straight questions you just need to understand uh, 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 few uh, a few cluster pl planning details which i have uh, created as part of my play playlists and then hadoop cluster installation and administration so this is also there will be uh, uh, all the questions will be straight there won't be any complexities but it has 25% weightage so even though it says 25% weightage uh, it it has huge overlap with uh, the first section okay so uh, and and also the the uh, they will give a case study and ask which tool you should use so you need to have understanding of each of these tools the purpose of those things not the um, I, um, not the installation aspects but the purpose of each of these tool impala flume uzi hue cloudera manager scoop hive and pig you need to know the purpose of it especially impala you should know because impala is a cloudera product so they will at least ask one or two questions on impala okay so there will always be that bias no matter which vendor you go with and then resource management it's a very small topic but it has good amount of weightage 10% and then monitoring and logging so except this monitoring and logging i have created the material okay if you go to my channel and search for ccah so this is the playlist so last uh, last section i have not covered yet i will be covering uh, in next 2 3 weeks or a month Uh, other than that everything is uh, covered okay so this is about cdh but i don't recommend uh, sorry this is about ccah but i don't recommend ccah out of the available hadoop administration exams i give preference to hortonworks than ccah because the pattern is outdated uh, now the trend is uh, the tests are being conducted in subjective manner where they will get give few tasks and you have to execute those things 
this is one of the first few certifications they have started and they are continuing the legacy okay uh, even if you uh, follow the cloudera other certifications of cloudera slowly they are discontinuing all these objective uh, type uh, certification exams and they are getting into subjective type certification exams for example cca spark and hadoop developer they give 10 uh, questions uh, 10 scenarios and you have to develop um, for that scenario uh, similarly ccp data engineer which is a four hour exam uh, it it gives uh, they give uh, seven scenarios and you have to uh, uh, um, you have to at least uh, complete five scenarios uh, correctly okay and also they have data science certification exam it it is uh, it is like ocm oracle certified master uh, so it's it's very in depth and uh, you need to have experience you need to complete a project also they give time frame around a month or two you have to complete a project and they will evaluate the project and then they give, they will give that data science certification so uh, the uh, i am giving examples the uh, about the trend okay so all the new certifications uh, after these initial certifications are mostly subjective and uh, also they are discontinuing those objective certifications so for example ccdh is another very successful certification exam from cloudera which is discontinued in 2015 um, and also there is another certification on hbs which is discontinued in 2014 okay so now uh, let me take to the hot works before getting into there let me actually show the uh, uh, material on my channel okay so here uh, this is the playlist for hortonworks data platform certification uh, certified administrator exam and uh, if you go through it most of these videos overlap with whatever you have done as part of uh, or as uh, whatever you are doing as part of the setting up the cluster but i have given the uh, certification twist uh, in some of the cases so immediately after completing a particular topic i i uh, so hortonworks actually provide a aws uh, image which you can uh, use to practice the exam you don't need to spend weeks on that you just have to spend approximately 8 to 10 hours to understand the questions and uh, when you do it first time at max it will take 8 to 10 hours once you uh, set up the cluster and once you start practicing on the exam you will uh, answer some of them incorrectly and you have to uh, sometimes uh, discard the um, uh, the virtual machine or amazon ec2 instance and you have to uh, redo it okay so th those things will take time so you have to spend at least 8 to 10 hours at max um, and all those details are provided here so for example right here uh, one minute so the second video itself is about setting up practice exam in aws and then whenever i covered a topic for example configuring a local http repository okay uh, i have after after uh, uh, explaining all the uh, all the details about how to configuring uh, configure hdp local repository i also uh, so there is a question in the exam um, i actually demonstrated how to answer that question and this actually shows on the exam lab how to configure local repository so the questions will be in similar fashion the questions might be different when you go to the certification but uh, the practice exam will give you an idea how the pattern will be okay so for uh, for the hdpca they give um, somewhere between uh, 7 to 10 questions and you have to if they give 7 you have to answer at least 5 of them correct or 6 of them correct with 7 you have to get 6 of them correct with 10 i think you have to get 7 of them correct mostly they give 7 and you have to get 6 of them correct okay and it will be straightforward once you practice hands on it's, it will not be uh, very tough to answer these questions if you go to it directly then uh, it will be tough okay and uh, now i will get into the details about the curriculum so you just search for hdpca so i have material for both hdpca i have completed um, but uh, cloudera I have not completed completely. Still, there, are, there there is some material which needs to be completed. The last section. 
okay so here uh, when you search for htpca it will take you the details so based upon the task they have given here i have created one or more videos uh, depending upon the complexity of the task so the material is be, uh, is uh, or the the content is developed based on the published curriculum of uh, hdpca and they have given the references uh, uh, for each and every topic uh, and i i try to use only those refer those as references while demonstrating from the certification perspective okay and uh, one more thing is you will ha have access to these documents whatever documents they are providing uh, uh, as resources yeah, you will get these documentations deployed on the uh, cluster which will they, which they will provide at the time of certification so you can use the documentation um, uh, but unless you practice um, seeing this documentation it will be a challenge for you to search at the time of the exam so you have to be it, it is very important for you to get familiarized with the documentation okay so any questions about the certification here uh, i have covered both ccah and hdpca i personally recommend hdpca because it is more in line with the current trend and uh, also uh, if you know the uh, if you set up the cluster and if you practice well um, you uh, the probability of passing it is very high and there is very less scope to deviate uh, from what you learn whereas in cloudera it can be open ended means they might ask any question um, as it is objective and at times uh, the questions might be misleading when when it comes to objective questions and the questions can cause confusion and you don't have access to the documentation to clarify your confusion whereas with the hot on works you will have uh, the documentation and they will give the case study you can uh, uh, provide the answer sometimes questions will have multiple answers when they evaluate your answer if if the answer is not in line with their expectation they will mark it as incorrect but you can always uh, uh, push back and uh, ask for the explanation why they marked it as incorrect uh, typically they are uh, uh, very responsive and uh, if you can convince them your answer is correct they will uh, uh, either give you a retest or they will actually uh, change uh, your status from fail to pass okay so you need to know uh, those those details also some some guys will get disappointed after the certification if they think a couple of questions are correct okay so then we will go to the ne uh, next uh, uh, next audience so let me stop this video also